Hey you guys, so in today's video we are going to be talking all about six more things that you can probably stop buying. I have something to say really quick before this video gets started. I will leave a timestamp down below if you don't want to hear what I'm about to say. But in light of recent developments here in the beauty community, I feel like I have to say something. Because I wrote this video about a week ago, maybe longer, honestly. The first video that I did like this did so well and I got so many requests to do another one where I basically just tell you guys like different categories of products that either aren't worth the money, you probably have enough of, or all kind of the same thing. Basically trying to debunk some of the marketing that we're getting thrown at us. 24-7, 365, that's kind of my journey on this channel these days, and it's going to be the journey I stay on for quite some time, I think, because I'm so happy creating this content. You guys are responding really well to it, and I think it's important. But there are certain categories of product I'm gonna mention in this video that recently have kind of come under fire because of a, a launch that's that's transpired the past few days or so. Um, and I really, <laughs> I wanted to make a whole video on that topic very badly, honestly. It's, I even started writing a script for it because I have things I wanted to say because I feel like it is symptomatic of such a big problem in the community. I wish I had enough field research to say definitively if all of the stuff that we see happening in the beauty community is unique to the beauty community because there's so much more out there in YouTube and there are other facets of YouTube that I enjoy watching. But the general consensus out there is that we do not have our shit together. We are called the dumpster fire of YouTube. But the reason I'm not making the video is because I don't know how much I want to focus on specifics in the community. Like I don't wanna comment on exact products or exact people or exact situations because somehow once you do that there's a whole group of people who are just gonna have their fingers in their ear and not want to hear anything you have to say or there's a whole other group of people who will try to put fuel on the fire to make any given situation worse so yeah you can't talk about anything particular but yet there are lessons to be learned in the particulars. And that's what makes what I would like to do with this channel so difficult because I would just much rather people pay attention to the bigger picture of what's going on than sit here and feel like it's a matter of you have to choose size because it's not productive. Like granted, there are certain situations where certain people need to answer for certain behaviors and take responsibility for certain things, but we cannot control what they do at the end of the day. And some people are gonna keep doing what's been working. What we can do is take a closer look at the way we react to things. I don't feel like people are one way on the internet and completely different in real life. Like if you're the type of person who will consistently, no matter what someone does, <laughs> no matter what happens, continue to blindly follow and support that person and then attack anyone who doesn't agree with that, I don't believe for one second you're not like that out in the real world too. And that's no way to live. Like it's not in your best interest to be so blinded by your emotional attachment to anything that you're not taking stock of how that affects you or others. Like that is so serious to me because I know people in real life that are like this, who are in relationships with people, who know people, who treat them not so great, who aren't very honest, who are very manipulative and they just can't see it because they don't want to see it. And anyone that tries to give them you know, advice or sway them into seeing things for what they are, they attack. And it's just like, that bothers me a lot more, like I said, than any of the particulars of what's going on. But sometimes it's hard to make a point without them. So I don't really know where I'm going with the statement. I'm just frustrated and I feel like it needed to be said. Also, I feel like I have to say it because I don't get a lot of negative comments here on my channel. Like you guys are pretty rad, but the ones I do get are constantly accusing me of being negative, of me being a hater. You can have a discussion and have opinions and have different opinions, but to constantly bathe everything in negativity that is not of your purview of things like that is so pointless I don't know what the goal is in that situation so all that to be said everything I'm about to say is not in the interest of negativity and it's also oddly enough not in the interest of hopping on kind of the current status of the beauty community and talking about that and as, as a particular because like I said I wrote this a while ago it was before any of the recent developments developed like just take it under advisement. Just think about it, sleep on it. Nothing bad's gonna happen if you question some things. Like, 
I'm just saying. Anyway, <laughs> so the number one thing that you can probably stop buying are bundles. There was once a wise woman who had a channel by the name of Makeup Struggles, and she said, bitches love bundles. Bitches do love bundles, and companies have figured this out. But let's be clear, to me, bundles, gift set, subscription boxes, like, it is all the same thing to me. It's like, I know, I know, this bundle only contains one of the actual items that you want, but hear me out, hear me out. It also costs more. What? This is marketing, absolutely without a doubt. Like if you guys actually think there are businesses out there with their infrastructure and the logistics and R&D and with like heads of departments and all, everyone's just sitting around being like, I wonder how we can give and get nothing in return. Like that's not a thing. So a lot of times these bundles that come out, I feel, especially when it comes to online shopping, like brands, ones that aren't physical and brick and mortar stores, they're doing this because it saves them money and it saves them money on shipping. So let's say for example, you know, you have a lipstick and you could sell someone, this is my lipstick for the sake of argument. You can sell someone this lipstick and you're gonna have to have a box for this lipstick. And then you're gonna have to take that box for that one lipstick and you're gonna have to go and you're gonna have to ship it. From beginning to end, it's more expensive just in a single product for that company than it is to send it to you in a bundle because you're gonna spend more money that way anyway, but more importantly, they're going to save money also. Like, do you see what I'm saying? Literally, anytime a business tries to come at me with that, well, if you spend more money, you'll save more money, crap. Like, I, not dog, sorry. I mean, in the event that you buy the bundle of lipsticks and you actually use every single one of them often enough to justify the price of the bundle, Sure, I personally have never been in that situation. Fenty is a good example of a company that bundles that almost got me very recently. So I was on the market for a contour stick, a contour cream, contour product of some kind. I knew I didn't want it to be in a palette and I knew I didn't really want it to be just like a concealer. I wanted a cream contour and I went to Sephora and I'm sniffing around Fenty because I had those matchsticks and I found this one that I wanted and it was the color Amber. And I swatched it on my hand and I was like, yes, this is what I've been looking for. And alas, would you know, there are no amber matchsticks in stock, but they did have a trio in stock that contained three different matchsticks, including the one that I wanted. But I knew, like I knew, like I knew, I would never use the other two matchsticks in the bundle. So I had two options. I could go home and order the matchstick that I wanted and wait two to five days, depending on what's going on with Sephora and have it. Or I could walk out with this bad boy today if I just buy the bundle. And it was like, okay, sure. Like I'm about to pay double what I want to pay but I'm gonna get free stuff out of it. I mean, I knew there wasn't a snow cone chance in hell that I wasn't gonna use any of the other sticks, but I would have the stick that my heart desired. That's what she said. I almost did it. I almost did it. I put it in my little basket and I walked around the store for a little bit and then like some voice of reason overcame me and just <sighs> talked me into doing the right thing. So I went home and somehow, some way, I found the inner strength deep inside of me to get through this crazy thing we call life for the three days that it took for the stick I really wanted to come in the mail. Can you be made a saint while you're still alive? I don't know. I just think it needs to be looked into after what I went through. The lesson to be learned here is if you are not out in the world actively looking for something, do not justify to yourself that you should buy a bundle of something else because in some way marketing has convinced you that it's a better deal. Do not allow this shit to creep into your life or into your house. Buy what you need and leave the rest. Number two. Nude lipsticks. <laughs> Nude lipsticks are to the makeup industry what a California roll is to a sushi joint. It's safe, it's basic, and people who don't really know what they want will probably buy it. Now, let me just be clear. Nude lipsticks bore the shit out of me. If I had it my way, I would only ever wear red lipstick, literally. That's all I ever wanna wear. It's the thing I feel the best in. So I also don't have the type of relationship with nude lips that other people might have. So it's easy for me to be like, stop buying it. But let me tell you, just because I don't like them that much, it doesn't mean I don't own them. And I own them because of marketing. Like I got sucked into this and I got into this mindset that is really popular here on YouTube that it's like, oh, um, this nude is so different from this nude. They're not, <laughs> they're not. Yes, 
there are as many tones of nudes as there are skin tones of human beings because that is the essence of a nude lip. It's the goal is to have a neutral lip that complements your skin tone in a way that doesn't overpower you, doesn't wash you out. I get the point. But the, the market is just so oversaturated with nudes that I just think it's bananas to sit here at this point and keep on saying that they're all so different. That is axiomatically untrue. Nude lipsticks are like the highlighters of the mouth, which I talked about in my last video. Like you can have 50 nude lipsticks and wear one every day for 50 days and based solely on your own buying habits, probably will not have any variation in tone or color. We're not out there buying nudes of all different <laughs> like styles. They're all kind of the same because that's the point of them. It's to flatter you and your situation. So you're not buying a orange toned nude or a peach toned nude when it doesn't look good on you. You're not gonna do that. You're probably buying the same pinky nude over and over and over again. I honestly think at this point I have maybe three nude lipsticks that I wear all the time. But most of the time when I buy them, they never get used. Like a really good example of this are Charlotte Tilbury. Um, I have Nude Kate and Kim KW. They're nude lipsticks. They're super nude lipsticks and they're beautiful. And I love Charlotte Tilbury so much. But even my redheaded British goddess could not get me to use this stuff because I have enough of it. I have the ones I gravitate towards. I don't need any more than that. I think nude lipstick is what you do not buy the most of if you truly are a nude lip lover. You spend your money on things like lip liners and lip gloss because that is something you can manipulate your existing nude lipsticks with to change the overall shade of them. So the lipstick I have on right now, if I wore it with a pinker lip liner, it would look more pink. If I wore it with a browner nude liner, it would look more nude. If I put a nude gloss on top of it, it's gonna look more nude as opposed to a pink gloss like you can change the entire way a lipstick looks based on what you pair it with so I don't feel like you need to buy a bunch of nude lipstick to change up your nude lip life go with lip gloss or something I don't know I just I, hate, I don't I don't know do what you want the number three thing that you have enough of are expensive eyelashes I shudder at the thought that I once bought expensive eyelashes and I bought them consistently because I did I sure did 40 bucks a pop here is a short list of things I wrote down that you can buy with $40 depending on your car and the location that you currently reside in you can fill up your gas tank you can pay one of your utility bills like my water bill and my gas bill are like 20 bucks a month you can buy four matinee movie tickets at least two pizzas you can buy a cold brew coffee maker. You can go on a pretty epic solo sushi date and get you a California roll if you like new lipstick. You can actually also buy a few Bernay Brown books, which is something we all definitely need to be reading more of in this community, if you ask me. And the thing is, most of the stuff I just mentioned doesn't even cost $40. You'd have some money left over. The fact that companies have managed to successfully market $40 eyelashes to us is banana sandwich with a side of holy guacamole. It literally makes me want to flip tables, especially when I think about how I used to once do that. I understand that a lot of companies and brands would like to have you look at it as this like, well, you can wear them multiple times kind of thing, but like, extra, extra, read all about it. You can do that with $10 lashes too. Just saying. But listen, you guys, on top of all that, mink lashes are disgusting. I can't believe people actually want to wear dead animal fur on their eyes. And I don't care what brand or company you're buying from that likes to say they're cruelty free. That's not true because while what the company does to get that fur might not have anything to do with harming the animals, essentially what's going on is you have mink farms and these animals are in cages waiting to be slaughtered and mink eyelash companies are buying the hair that falls into the bottom of the crates. So like, yeah, in essence, that company isn't out there killing minks to get these lashes, but it's not cruelty free. And yes, I know any natural haired makeup brush is essentially done the same way. I know that. And listen, in a perfect world, we wouldn't have them, we wouldn't use them either. But to me, at the very least, at least a makeup brush is something that you're gonna use for years. I have had brushes for seven years. I don't have seven year old eyelashes. The supply and demand situation for lashes versus brushes are completely different. <sighs> I told you guys I was extra sassy today and like, I wasn't kidding. Eyelashes eventually and entirely too soon at $40 a pop get tossed out. Or God forbid you cry with one on or you lose it or something. I made a comment in a video not too long ago about how influ influencer culture 
has desensitized us to things that we would have once thought were absolutely ridiculous. Because if you told me 10 years ago that people are happily and consistently paying $40 for a pair of eyelashes, I would have thought you were joking because it sounds like a joke. I will never, ever, ever again in my life pay more than $10 for a pair of lashes. I don't care what happens, period dot, astronaut. Number four, I think we're on number four. One thing at a time brands. Now, you will know exactly what I mean as I get into this, but it's something that is definitely a lot more prevalent with influencer brands or brands that are run by people who are already well known at any rate. I mean, like I wasn't around when NARS and Laura Mercier launched, so like for all I know, they did the exact same thing, but I'm just going off of what I see now. So yeah, in the past two years or so, we've just seen a huge, huge, huge amount of influencer-owned um, brands coming out. Well, I mean, a bunch of new brands coming out, nonetheless, but you know what I mean. And they are all kind of adopting the same formula, which is releasing things one item at a time. One eyeshadow palette, one highlighter, one lipstick, and that's their line. And then they're just slowly adding each component of their line as the weeks, months, years go by. I'm aware of how this benefits things from the business side of it for them, for the brands. Like it helps them figure out how much stock they need to keep. They take money from one launch and put it towards the next one. They can beta test production issues. I get it, like I understand how it works, but that's also not my problem. But it also puts them in a position where anything they launch is revolutionary because it's from them. Even if it's like as basic as lip gloss, because while we have tons of lip gloss options out there, we don't have their lip gloss yet, right? For me personally, I just do not, this is so funny in light of so many things right now. I personally don't ever jump onto anything new super fast. And I'm kind of a side-eyeing contrarian by nature and I always have been. So this doesn't work on me, but I do understand how it could work on others. Especially when the people who employ this tactic the most successfully are the ones that you have a relationship with already. It's not some nameless, faceless, um, megacorp dropping something, it's almost always, almost always, um, done by a brand that is owned by someone you know. Kylie Jenner did this. Kim Kardashian did this. I've not seen an influencer brand yet that doesn't do this. You know who these people are. You have some kind of connection with them. A social media figure can much more easily hype up and get you excited over their groundbreaking neutral eyeshadow palette than some nameless, faceless company can. A lot of bigger companies who have been in the game for a lot longer, I don't think have the advantage or the ability to do this quite as successfully. They kind of depend on like limited edition launches or collections to keep the brand exciting and spicy. But if you're literally starting a brand from the ground up and you can go item by item, first we're doing lipsticks, now we're doing lip gloss, now we're doing lip liner, now we're doing eyeshadow, now we're doing eyeliner, like every, quarter, you get to have a brand new launch and everyone's gonna rush to buy it because you didn't have it before. Does that make sense? Am I talking in circles? And like, once again, I understand why this is and how it works, but at the end of the day, it is our job to do our due diligence. It is our job to keep an eye on our wallets. It is not the job of people who are trying to sell to us to care about our financial health or what goes on with our money. They don't care. They depend on the fact that you don't care that much too. They need you not to. Influencer brands in general, um, I feel like have the chance to really change the market forever and for better because they just have so much experience with what people wanna see, what people um, are into, they have a very good relationship with their customers. Like it could be a beautiful thing, it could be. But I think that you guys have got to stop. You have to stop putting all of your faith in total strangers, you just do. I did a video uh, last month where I talked about the things that I think make the beauty community so toxic. And one of the ones that I said was that people think they know these influencers. And while that is how they're able to do what they do, it's a huge disadvantage to you because you don't know them. And it's not gonna hurt you to sit back and let the launch come and go and then put your dollar into it. Especially because with influencers especially, especially with influencers, like they put product out counting on you sharing it. That is how this works. You, if you did not, live 
in the beauty community the way that some of us do, you wouldn't even know who half these people are. You wouldn't know anything about their makeup that's coming out. The only people that are buying influencer based products are people who care about that influencer and they're going to post about the fact that they bought their new lipstick that they just bought. And the influencer is counting on that to help promote their product even further. And then in that case, influencers are getting other influencers to talk about them because it's very political. And if you can get on this person's good side, maybe they'll shut you out. Like, I have no faith in any of this anymore. I understand how the sausage is getting made. And I think a lot of us do also. It's just, we're not taking it seriously. And I'm really crunk about this right now in light of certain things, like I just said. When I wrote this a week ago, all these notes and thoughts that I have, I didn't feel quite as like hopped up about it. But it's just like evergreen. This is going to be an issue in six months. It's gonna be an issue in a year. It's gonna be an issue in two years, unless we stop playing along. Moving on. The last thing you can probably stop buying are primers. This is a very unpopular opinion. There are essentially only about two different primers that I really believe in. Let me tell you what, this $192 garbage right here is not one of them. I am irritated on so many levels that this thing has been promoted as much as it has been by influencers. I honestly think it is borderline irresponsible. And it just further paints the picture to me that there are tons of people in this industry who have just completely lost touch with who was actually watching them. $192, that is like car payment money. That's like groceries for a couple of weeks. That, that's savings account money. That is ridiculous. And I don't give a squirrel's rectum how good it works or supposedly works. That is just too much money. If you have a mountain of disposable income, I guess that's fine, that's one thing. But statistically speaking, most people do not. And certainly most people who are watching any given influencer do not either. So for these people to get on camera, that get work done regularly, have thousand dollar skincare routines, to go on camera and talk about a $200 primer and act like that is the thing that is making a huge difference in their way that their skin or their makeup looks is just garbage to me. Please don't buy this shit. Because even if it is the best thing, that has ever touched the makeup industry. What you gonna do? You gonna budget four, six, eight hundred dollars a year for your ma makeup primer? Depending on how much you use it? What? 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 That's ridiculous. You need like two primers. And the two that you pick are completely dependent on you. Blanket statement, you might need a hydrating primer. You could use your moisturizer for that in all honesty, but if you need one for some reason, get one. You might need one to stop your makeup from breaking up on your skin if you're excessively oily. And maybe you have one that helps with like pores. But my point is you just need a couple. And then, you know, if I had to say, you do need Urban Decay All Nighter. I, I just think a good lock your makeup in place setting spray, you can't go wrong with it. They do make a difference, they do work. But other than that, I just don't believe in primers. So don't at me. That's how I feel. <laughs> Not to circle back to this, but as far as that $192 primer goes, where, where this becomes dangerous to me, if you are at a place with your appearance that $192 primer seems like something that's going to get you to a place that you might be finally satisfied with the way that you look, whether it's how your skin looks, how your makeup looks, or a combination of all the things. When does that stop? At what point do you say, okay, enough is enough. At some point, I just have to learn to like what I see and know that it cannot come at all costs to get the, the look I'm going for. Does that make sense? Because like once your $192 primer thirst has been quenched, like, then what? Are you just gonna like keep going up? You know, next is the $392 primer you need to try out because it exists. Like I just, I don't buy it, man. I don't buy it. It's a slippery slope, that's all I'm trying to say. All right guys, all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed the video and I really hope that I didn't come across quite as sassy as I think I did, but I'm feeling some type of way this week with my community and I say all this stuff with love and I say all of this with hope that we can do good things moving forward. And, and I'm really just looking out for you guys, I swear. But anyway, I hope you're having an amazing day. Make sure you are subscribed if you are not, check the down bar. Links to all my social media platforms. And I will catch you in the next one.